Welcome to our energy unit. And I'm so excited about this unit because it really ties together everything in physical science, whether it's the introduction to physics kind of concepts we've talked about or the introduction to chemistry topics in my class that we will be talking about later this year. I know some of you listening, you're starting, you started with chemistry and then did physics after. Regardless, energy is really this overarching concept that connects it all. But because of that, it can be hard to talk about it at an at a, you know, an introductory level because while it connects everything, it is, it is complex, but I'm going to be doing my, my job here to best simplify this for you. And there will be things where it will be an oversimplification, but that's to make this less overwhelming and complicated for you. Just know in the point of this course, this physical science course, is to introduce you to these concepts that then other courses, like a full year chemistry, like a full year physics course, those will um, build upon this. So this is just going to be some foundational stuff. Again, I'm going to have to oversimplify some things, but it's for your good, I promise. Okay, so we're going to start by just talking about what the nature of energy is. And in class, we're going to be doing some discovery stations just so you can kind of learn about this on your own without me having to talk to you so much about it. Um, but for the sake of the video, as always, we're just going to kind of push through. So what is energy? The best way that I can define this is it's the ability to cause change. Another way that this can be defined is it's the capacity to do work or to produce heat. And I have stars on these little asterisks because we're going to talk more about work in concept four and heat in concept three. So just kind of hold that in your back pocket for now. Um, I think, it, again, this will make more sense as we build on this. But for now, really just think about it is as the ability to cause change. It is measured in joules, which is represented by a capital J, and one joule is equal to one kilogram times meter per second squared. So that's kind of a complicated unit. That's why it's just a lot easier if we refer to it as joules. And energy does come in many different forms. Fundamentally, these different forms of energy, we can often categorize them as kinetic or potential. So that's kind of how we're going to start learning about energy is by categorizing them as kinetic or potential. But, you know, there's always exceptions. There's things that could be defined as both, that kind of thing. But we have to start somewhere in our understanding. So to simplify it as much as I possibly can, kinetic energy is energy in motion and potential energy is stored energy. Okay, so in class, we're going to pause and do a little card sort activity based on what you've already learned in the discovery stations. But again, for the sake of the video, we're going to keep pressing it through. So let's talk more about that kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, or it could be abbreviated as KE, is energy in motion. Here are kind of some examples of things that types of energy or forms of energy we would categorize as kinetic energy. So for instance, thermal energy. We're going to have a whole concept about this in concept three. But it's really looking at the movement of particles, the atoms or molecules in a substance. And we're to, again, we'll talk about this in concept three. We'll talk about this in our matter unit. But again, where we're looking at these particles, they're moving um, particles in a gas and a matter that has a gaseous state uh, have more of this energy. Particles in a solid have less of this energy, but it is there's movement of these particles, which is why it'd be categorized as kinetic electrical energy could be considered kinetic or potential. Um, typically when we think of electrical, we're thinking about it stored maybe in a battery as potential. But then if you're looking at the actual flow of electrons of electricity through, you know, this wire here, that would be considered kinetic because that flow of electrons, that energy is moving in those electrons. We're going to come back to this in our electricity and magnetism unit. Now, electromagnetic energy is also considered kinetic. There's a bunch of different names for electromagnetic that are often kind of referring to the same thing. So solar energy is energy coming from the sun, um, light energy, radiant energy, but electromagnetic is the best term to encompass the totality of all the forms of light that come off the electromagnetic spectrum. Again, we're going to talk about this way more in our waves unit to come. So 
Hang in there with me. I did put a sun up here though. Know that the sun radiates electromagnetic energy, gives off solar energy is another way to say it. It also gives off heat or thermal energy, which again, we'll talk about more in concept three, but inside the sun is actually nuclear energy, creating energy through the process of nuclear fusion. Uh, which we'll be talking about when we get to nuclear reactions in our chemistry unit. So again, like I said, so much of this is overlapping. It's challenging to simplify it. Sound energy is also considered to fall under that category of kinetic because it's looking at vibrating matter and how energy moves through mediums in the form of waves. Um, we'll come back to this in our waves unit as well. Okay, now potential energy is that stored energy. So a couple of examples of this, elastic, we see this like in a bow and arrow when we're pulling something back, there's this stored, um, it's in a slingshot too or a slinky. Um, when things are compressed or stretched, they have this elastic potential that can then be converted into kinetic when that object can then move. Chemical is stored energy within the chemical bonds that hold atoms together in compounds. We will talk about this so much in our bonding and reactions units in chemistry. It, this is so important in biology when we talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration and ATP being a usable energy source. You know, chemical energy is not just limited to explosions and fireworks as is pictured here. Okay. It's in all of us, it's in the food that you're eating and your body's breaking down to release that energy in, the, in a form that's usable for it called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So this is all stuff um, that's going to come back over and over again. But that stored energy is really important. Like I mentioned previously, nuclear energy is potential energy in the sun. Nuclear fusion is a type of fusion is a type of reaction that is creating um, nuclear energy. Nuclear fission is a type of reaction that also can create energy. That's when the nucleus of an atom is split and it releases insane amounts of energy. We'll come back to that in our reactions unit. Magnetic energy is um, another one that's complicated to explain, but the best way to say it is that things that are magnetic, magnetic objects, they have a, they produce a magnetic field, which within that field, there's some ma magnetic potential energy stored in it. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. We'll come back to this in the electricity and magnetism unit. Now, the one that I think is the easiest to understand, especially at this point in our learning is gravitational potential energy. So any object that is above the earth's surface has gravitational potential energy because you have to think anything that's above the earth's surface, gravity is going to be trying to pull it down. And so that gravitational potential energy here, as it's moving downward, gets converted to kinetic energy. And so this, this relationship between potential and kinetic is something that we are going to be um, looking at a lot over the next two concepts in particular. So in class, we're going to stop and do this inquiry activity. We're going to look at this energy skate park. I think it's going to help you so much to understand this relationship specifically between potential and kinetic energy and how those are converted and transferred back and forth into the different forms. But we are going to keep going in our notes to learn how to calculate kinetic energy and also gravitational potential energy because those are two things. Um, quantifying them helps us to see how then they can transfer between both forms. So again, kinetic energy is energy in motion. To calculate it, the equation is one half mv squared, where m is our mass measured in kilograms and v is our velocity measured in meters per second. So notice that's going to get us, because this is going to get squared, that gives us kilograms times meters per second squared, which is equal to one joule. And kinetic energy is a form of energy, thus it's going to be measured in joules. So let's do an example together. We're going to use our radar problem solving strategy. If you are new to It's Not Rocket Science resources, this is what we love to do to solve word problems. So first, the R in radar stands for read. So we are going to read this. It says, a jogger with a mass of 62 kilograms is moving at a speed of 3.0 meters per second. What is the jogger's kinetic energy? So the next part of radar, A, stands for analyze. We say, what do we know? And what are we, what do we not know? What are we trying to figure out? We're going to label those knowns and unknowns. Okay. So we're going to dig deep as we're reading and really pull the things out that are important. So first, what do we not know? What are we trying to figure out? We're trying to figure out the joggers kinetic energy. So K E it equals question marks. We don't know it. Well, what do we know? 
we know the jogger has a mass of 62 kilograms. And we also know that there's a speed, which we know speed and velocity are the same in terms of the magnitude. Velocity just also includes a direction. So we can use that speed of 3.0 meters per second and label that as our velocity to plug into this equation. Okay, then D, radar, D, D stands for diagnose. This is where we determine the best equation to use. You would pull out your reference sheet that I give you for these units and you'd say, okay, what on here will help me find kinetic energy? And you'll see the equation Ke equals one half mv squared. Now we've done all of this background information. I like to draw a line to separate it from the actual work so we can stay nice and organized here. And now we can actually assess. That's the second A in radar. We're going to actually solve the problem here. So Ke equals one half mv squared. I'm going to plug in 62 kilograms for the mass and 3.0 meters per second for the velocity. Now, if I'm going to break this down into pieces, just to make it simpler, you could do this all in one fell swoop on your calculator, but I would find, okay, what's half of 62? That's 31. And what's 3.0 squared? That's nine. And then do 31 times nine and you get 280 joules. The third, the second R in radar, the ending one, the ref stands for reflect. And that's where you ask yourself, like, does this number make sense? Um, now for our sake, like to you, you're like 280 joules means nothing to me, um, which is fine. But typically sometimes it's, you know, we're finding a velocity or something where it's like, okay, could someone run that fast? And that's where you're going to kind of assess, does this make sense or not for energy? It's not going to necessarily make sense to you regardless, because you've probably never thought about joules before in your life. Okay, let's do a little practice with this. So we're going to pause. I want you to find this first one. We're going to find kinetic energy for these first two. And then there's two um, more challenge problems where you're going to have to do a little rearranging of the equation. Let's see if we can do that. In class, I'm going to share all these answers with you. But for the sake of the video, we're going to move on and talk about calculating potential energy. So specifically gravitational potential energy, that GPE. It's energy stored in objects that are above Earth's surface. And the equation to find this is GPE equals ham. So H stands for height, which is measured in meters. A stands for acceleration, but it's specifically the acceleration due to gravity measured in meters per second squared. So that's our 9.8 meters per second squared. Because remember, GPE is anything that ha is above the Earth's surface. That's why the acceleration due to gravity will apply here. And then mass is measured in kilograms. Sometimes people write this equation as GPE equals MGH. Again, where the M is mass, the H is height, and the G is the acceleration due to gravity. But um, I think ham is just easy to remember. And I like that it's ham. So we use acceleration here. And a lot of textbooks also use that too. So it's not just my personal preference. So let's look at this picture. This is a Newton's cradle. Um, in class, I can show you one of these in real life. But what it's showing you is at the peak of its path, this sphere that we're going to pull up this way with our hand has its maximum gravitational potential energy. Okay. When it's at its max height, when the height is greatest, GPE will be its greatest. Before that energy gets converted back to kinetic energy as we let go and it gets converted to Ke as it's moving before it hits these objects. And we'll see more about that going back and forth um, in concept two. But let's do an example together. So radar, let's read. How much gravitational potential energy does a 5.0 kilogram rock have if it's sitting on the edge of a cliff that's 11 meters high? So what are we looking for? We're looking for GPE. What do we know? We know that mass is 5.0 kilograms, and we know that um, the acceleration due to gravity for anything above the Earth's surface is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we know that the height is 11 meters. So we're gonna diagnose what equation will be helpful here. Well, GPE equals ham. Then we're gonna draw a line to separate all of this background work from the actual um, solving and assessing we're gonna do here. So now let's plug in. So H is 11, A, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, M for mass is 5.0. All of this is coming from here. I'm just plugging it in here. And then we can put it in our calculator and solve and we get 540 joules. Okay, here are three practice problems for you to do, and then we'll go over these in class, and then you will be sent off on your own to do a little uh, practicing in your packets. But that is concept one, the nature of energy.